All right, everybody. Welcome to Intro to Gen Chem. Uh, I'm Sean. I'm going to be the instructor here. Um, so today is going to be mostly um, going over syllabus stuff, how the course is going to work, because this is a little bit different. Um, we are maybe more used to um, doing things over Zoom now than we were a year ago, um, but it's still a little bit uh, different for everybody. So we'll make sure everybody's on the same page when it comes to technology, um, cameras, random, random four-year-old disturbances that walk by the hallway. Um, and uh, and we will go, we might get to covering a little bit of new material of material today, but uh, this is basically just gonna be starting everything out slowly so we can, um, to make sure that uh, you being uncomfortable with the technology or any any of the organizational parts of the class is not a reason that you don't do as well as you as you could. Um, so bear in mind that uh, we all have lots of distractions going on at home as well. Um, I do as well. I'm do my best to be as professional as possible, but um, that may change from time to time as as I'm sure you've seen in some of your other classes. So. Uh, let's get started talking about the class a little bit. Um, as my my announcement last night um, hopefully made clear, this is all digital. We're not doing anything in person this quarter. Um, six months ago, I was hoping we'd be able to be in person for at least the labs, um, but just with the uh, with LTOSD and the and the K twelve schools still just in the process of going back, we just can't really go back just yet. We don't quite have enough vaccines yet, but uh, if you're taking the Gen Chem series starting next year, the labs at least will be um, fully in person is the plan for the fall. Um, so only one more quarter of uh, of Zoom labs. Um, fingers crossed. See how that all goes. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the syllabus and how things how what you guys can do to make sure that you guys you do as well as you can in this class. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how I like to teach um, and try and get everybody familiar with a little bit of how I think so that you you understand that I'm not I'm not looking going to go into your your work um, looking for places to ding you points that's not it's not who I am um, that said I also have high expectations of you guys and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get down there um, and then if we have time I'll tell you how you've been measuring everything wrong your whole life um, and then I'll teach you the better way to do it. And it's not really your fault, it's the fault of, of uh, living in the US. You've been taught to use incorrect scales and to do them incorrectly. And so we'll talk about the better way to do things. Uh, if we don't get to that today, and you, this will be commonly be the case with my lectures. Um, I usually prepare a couple extra slides that we won't get to this quarter that, or this lecture. That'll just be what we start with next lecture. So if you see slides seem duplicated because you're looking at the slides um, for this lecture and then you see the same slides show up again, that's why. Um, so let's talk a little bit about EVE, which is our, our school's way of saying, um, saying um, that we're doing things virtual, but because of the way the chancellor's office gives credit for community colleges, we can't just call it an online class. So we have to have a separate term for it. And that's that, that term Eve that you've heard around LTCC. Um, and, and that's right. It's still technically a face-to-face -face class because the, the funding works differently and the way the oversight works is all different for an online class versus face-to-face. -face. So this is, I'm gonna conduct this as though it was a face-to-face -face class as best I can. That said, us being virtual also means there's lots of um, extra benefits, um, so silver linings to being virtual. Um, first off, you can attend Zoom classes from anywhere, right? With regardless of what instruction or uh, distractions you've got going on wherever you need to be at any given time. Um, you can log into Zoom, then you can be there and ask questions in class. It also makes it really easy for me to record lectures. And then um, the way that that works is I'll record everything on Zoom, all of the lectures and any labs that we have where there's a, an introduction component. Um, I'll record that and then it 
it has to get downloaded and rendered on my computer and then I can upload it to YouTube it takes about an hour to get all that done. Once YouTube's done processing it, you guys can access it. It's a, um, like I said, about an hour, hour and a half after lecture and lab ends, um, you'll be able to get to everything and it's not limited. So if you can't be here for any lecture or lab, um, you can absolutely watch those on YouTube. Um, and I highly recommend you being here in real time as best you can, because that's how you're gonna be able to um, ask me questions. I, I really like when you guys interrupt me and ask me questions or clarification questions. Let me know I'm going too fast, um, too slow, that kind of thing. Um, if you guys aren't here in real time, then it's just me talking to a computer. I'm gonna go at the speed that I wanna go at. And regardless of how slow I start, it always ends up going pretty fast by the end. So uh, your job as students, if you're here in real time, is to slow me down when anytime I hit something that you don't understand. Um, and uh, but you will be able to go back after the fact and watch those lectures, or if you miss a lecture or lab, you will be able to get to all that information. Um, labs are going to be weird um, because we have these. They're called labster simu. They're lab simulations that we have access to for the state of California. They're kind of like a video game you, where you navigate around a virtual lab and click on things and say, okay, add these things together. Um, they're pretty short. They don't really emphasize a lot of the same things that I want to emphasize, but there's been a lot of research that says, even if it's a video game, um, the act of you moving a mouse cursor to click on something stores things differently in your, in your brain rather than just watching me do a video. So we will probably use some of these Labster simulations and we'll make sure everybody can, um, can make them run on their computer because there's a little bit of compatibility issues. And I'll probably, I'll supplement that with other um, either short quizzes about lab, lab material or um, I'll also talk, you know, wherever I can find other assignments to supplement. If I can find a good, a good assignment that you guys can do at home using measuring cups, for instance, instead of doing a virtual lab on Labster, I will do that. Um, but I also have to bear in mind not everybody has access to you know a good kitchen or you know measuring implements necessarily. So it's all going to kind of be ad, ad hoc and kind of figuring things out best we can as as we go. So please, if you have any concerns about that, let me know. Um, if you run into any specific uh, issues when it comes to, you know, getting, getting your simulate, the simulations running and anything, um, let me know and we'll make sure we can make it work or I'll find other options. Um, there's some people that just really, the labster simulations just really bother them. Um, they just really hate doing them and would rather do twice as much work. Um, I like a traditional homework assignment rather than do the labster sims. That's fine with me. I'll find, we'll find ways around it and I'll, I'll make alternate assignments as necessary. Um, when it comes to Zoom, I've also heard um, that term synchronous has been thrown around a lot. Synchronous just means at the same time, real time. You guys hear at the same time. So it's, I'm not pre-recording lectures and then just posting them. Um, I like you guys here with me as much as I can. It makes me feel a little bit at least like we're in a, in a classroom. Um, so we will also use some of the other features on Zoom. Breakout rooms have gotten a lot better over the last year. We use some of that. Um, the raise, raise your hand function is uh, the, probably the best way to get my attention. Um, things in the chat sometimes get missed, um, but if you raise your hand um, and I'll either ask you to unmute or then you put your question in the chat, that'll you know make sure I get my attention over on your question. Um, and if it seems like I'm just I just keep going and I'm not seeing you, then feel free to unmute and just you know interrupt me. And uh, it's totally possible I just missed your question in the chat or I'm not seeing your hand. That's totally fine. Um, I think everybody's familiar with Zoom etiquette when it comes to muting and unmuting these days. Um, one thing I will add as a as a request is if you can't have your camera on, I'm not going to require people have cameras on. Um, but if you can't have your camera on, I would really appreciate if you could put a take a picture of yourself and put it as your profile picture on Zoom, just so I can see your faces. Um, it really is a lot 
even if I'm not looking at a live picture, looking at a, a screen full of faces is a lot more better than just black boxes. Um, uh, but, uh, and that's, you don't have to do that right now, but it's just a, that would be a, a nice, a nice thing to do for me. And at least if a few of you at least have your cameras on every time would be helpful. Um, and then if you, uh, if you haven't seen how you can adjust your um, screen name, if you try to make sure your, your screen name is your actual name as best you can, um, just so if I call you, because since I'm not meeting you all in person, I'm going mostly on your names on Zoom. Um, and if your screen name is not the right name, I'm going to call you the wrong name and everybody's going to be confused. So um, as best you can keep up with all that stuff. It's not like any of it. I'm not going to grade you down if you don't have a profile picture. Or don't turn your camera on or anything. But it's uh, um, just an advantage for everybody. Make it feel like more like a real classroom. Um, and on that note, I also will not be grading attendance. I'm not going to mark you down if you can't be here in real time. Again, I, I recommend it. I prefer it. Um, but I'm not going to grade you down if you can't be. Right, so don't stress about that too much. Uh, I know everybody's work schedules are weird. Isabella, did you have a question? Yeah, do you mind if I just uh, let you know? There was um, a bunch of students that used the week one Zoom link. So I think they're all trying to get into this Zoom link. So we're all late because we were on okay. a different page. Okay, hopefully everyone's coming. So that's, thank you. Um, I, uh, I thought I caught all of last year's links and updated them to this year's links, but I must've missed one. Um, so hopefully the one on and with on that note, let's uh, pull up, I'll pull up the um, the Canvas shell and we'll go through the Canvas shell. Um, so everybody's familiar with getting logged on to Canvas and everything, I assume. This is what our Canvas shell, shell will look like. I tried to format it so that it'll even pull up and look okay on mobile, but I'm not a, I'm not a uh, web, web designer. So, um, you know, don't be too harsh on me on that side of things. Um, but these are the Zoom links. These are all updated. Um, and they're, they're all different Zoom links just because of the way that I have to make recurring meetings happen in my calendar. I have to have different Zoom links for lecture versus lab versus office hours. Um, but these are the one, these ones are all correct. And I will try to track down all of the old um, Zoom links in the other places and make sure I get them either deleted or switched over to this year's. Um, I'm sorry Zoom to link. interrupt, but I just came from another Zoom link yes. meeting, and there were several <laughs> students on that meeting too. So we just got word that this there was another Zoom link. So maybe I'll see if I can jump in there at the same. I think I can be in two Zoom meetings at the same time. Um, sorry. But, uh, no, yeah, sorry. That's that's what I was referring to. This one right here, I thought I got rid. I got rid of the big button at the top, but I missed that one. Um, so nobody's getting marked down for it. Thanks for letting me know. Um, any of those other ones you find, just let me know. Do you want me to go into this one? Uh, sure. Um, let me give me a second. I'm gonna mute for a second. I'm gonna have my wife log into the other Zoom real quick and send over everybody over this way, so there's no confusion. So hang on one sec. All right, so got those sent over. They should, everybody should be jumping back over here soon. This is also why it's important that I remember to record everything so that every, they uh, can experience the, the magic that is the first 10 minutes of my first lecture. Um, the, other, the other things from Canvas that are, that are specific, that are particularly important um, 
is basically I'm going to update all of these week one, week two buttons as we go along and all of your assignments for that week, all the links. Oh, it looks like nobody's left in the wrong link. So good for everybody. We all made it. Um, so in week one, we'll see um, basically just sort of a little tour. There's a resources module that kind of has some, some good um, some good technology stuff. Everybody's familiar with Zoom, clearly, if you're here. Um, I also highly recommend some, some smartphone apps um, that if you have room and have a smartphone, um, the Canvas app. And then there's this other app called uh, Cam Scanner. Um, and there's, there's lots of apps that do similar things. It's just the one that I've found that works the best with the least amount of, of spyware, you know, um, you know, hitting you up for uh, in, in app purchases, that kind of thing. Um, Cam Scanner basically just uses your camera as a scanner. So it allows you to take pictures of anything that you wrote down on a piece of paper, save it as a PDF. Um, and it actually interacts directly with the Canvas app. So you can actually go into Cam Scanner, take pictures of your homework assignment, hit share, go to the Canvas app, pick your assignment and upload it all from your phone pretty quickly. Um, it works, there's a few specific combinations of, I think there's a Samsung in particular has a one model of phone where cam scanner doesn't play well with Canvas and it won't interact properly. So there, there's still some compatibility issues, um, but find, finding something that'll allow you to use your either use a an actual scanner if you have one but if you don't almost everybody has a smartphone and that works just as well as a scanner and that's pretty advantageous for for turning in your work as a as a pdf um which is desirable from my point of view um because pictures work you can submit pictures you know just take a camera shot and upload it as a jpeg um it makes it a lot harder for me to grade which is not your issue, but as much as I can get you guys to use PDFs, um, that's a more professional option anyway. So you guys should all get used to using PDFs as much as you can, rather than just taking a you know a screenshot as a JPEG. Um, that said, I'll still be able to read your work, and I'm not going to grade you down. I just won't like it as much. Um, there's a couple other printable resources. These mat this mattered more when we were doing our tests in face-to-face -face and that was closed book. Um, but basically this official equation sheet and official periodic table are going to be attached to any exams you have in this class. Um, even in anything, if we were still doing things face-to-face -face and it was gonna be a closed book test, um, these would be your, your safety blankets. I would never take away the equation sheet from the periodic table. Um, so these are just good. There's nothing magical about the ones that I made. They're just the ones that I think match up to the material that we cover in this class the best. Um, so this is the ones that I would recommend using. But that said, there are a lots of other different um, periodic tables out there um, that are all, you know, all have the same information for the most part. So pick one that you feel um, you like the way it looks or um, but if you don't have a color printer, something like that, this one I believe is, um, yeah, it's all black and white. So you won't lose anything if you print it black and white. It's fairly simple. There's not any extra information in it really. Um, but that said, there, like I said, there are other, other uh, options out there as well. Um, and I think over the, over the course of the last few years, I've ironed out and found all of the typos, but there still might be some typos. I made these myself um, because I couldn't find periodic tables that had all the stuff that I wanted you guys to have. Um, so if you find something that looks like a typo, it certainly could be. Um, for a while, I had the same atomic mass for silver and gold because they're right above each other and the numbers wind up being close enough that I didn't catch it when I looked at it. So if you see something like that, just let me know. Um, other random stuff here, when we start talking about element names and symbols, we're going to be doing, um, it's not going to be a closed book quiz, but it's going to be a timed quiz that's going to be pretty quick. So you're going to want to be pretty quick on the draw when it comes to recognizing names and symbols. So I have some Quizlet 
flashcards for you guys to practice when we get closer, that kind of thing. Um, so resources just got a lot of, of random useful stuff, um, not necessarily essential to anything we're doing here, um, but just sort of go through, familiarize yourself. Um, your first homework assignment is a math review. The idea here is that some of this is going to be review for you. Some of it might not be review for you, or you might not remember it. Um, but the idea is that I push you guys hard on the math side in these first two weeks before the drop deadline. So that if you, anybody's gotten into this class and is over your head, you feel over your head in terms of the math requirements for this class, um, you have until a week from Friday to drop with no record and get a full refund. Um, so the idea is that if you work, if I push you guys really hard now, you'll know before the drop deadline if you need to drop and come back after you've taken college algebra or something like that. Um, that said, don't just do that without talking to me because you might actually be better at math than you think you are. I'd always prefer you get you talk to me before you drop and we'll and if I and if you say, man, I'm just underwater in the in the math department, then I'll say, yeah, maybe come back next year and take it if, after you've taken some more or I'll give you a pep talk and it's like, no, 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 you, you were really close. You're just missing this little piece of algebra knowledge. You forgot about, you know, distributing variables or whatever it is. So I prefer if you talk to me before you drop, but um, it's not like I can make that a requirement. And hopefully it's not a surprise after the drop deadline when it comes to the amount of math you guys need. Um, the keys on here too, check your answers. Um, the lab for this week is sort of just to get you familiar. It's normally we'd be doing lab safety, which is me going through a list of things. Don't do this in lab. You know, don't set your hair on fire. Don't spill chemicals. All these you know fun things. Um, there is a labster simulation that's take you like twenty minutes to go through. Um, if you can make it work, so I think I would recommend trying it just to uh, see if those simulations will work for you on your computer. Um, and then there's a, a short lab quiz. It's just multiple choice. There's nothing I can really grade you on on the lobster simulations. It's basically, did you finish it or not? And so there's going to be a short safety quiz that's things like, you know, is horseplay allowed in the lab? Yes, as long as it's funny. Or no, it's never allowed sort of questions. Um, just so everybody can get familiar with the um, how quizzes work on Canvas. And then also a getting to know you quiz so I can start to associate um you know oh this person is is an engineering is pre-engineering this person's trying to transfer into a nursing program um helps me kind of tailor my examples that kind of thing so um just random quiz questions again just to get you used to how these the canvas quizzes are set up um let's see am i missing anything else there's a little discussion board uh as well for you guys you have to I'm going to force you to discuss with each other at least this first week, but it's also a good place to post, you know, any sort of tech issues you're having issues with. Is anybody else having a problem with this or is anybody else answers not match the key Sean gave us? Um, if I'm not around, throw something up on the discussion board and talk to somebody else. Like, yeah, I got that answer too. I think maybe his key's wrong or uh, you didn't round properly over here and that makes your answer different over there. Um, so go ahead and you know use the discussion boards. There's a chat function on Canvas, but we don't have large enough classes, and not a, you know, and we're up in Tahoe. Not people don't tend to be super um, into the technology side of things. I've tried using the chat function, and nobody ever uses it. Um, so the discussion board seems to work a little bit better because people can respond at their leisure. Uh, any questions so far? Cool. Let's. Um, these are some some common questions I've gotten before. I've addressed some of these. Not going to mark you down point wise if you're not here in real time. I just recommend that you're here as much as you can be. Um, if you want to do or if I'm forcing you to submit your math review as a PDF, I can limit what types of files you can upload. And there are a couple ways to, to save it as a PDF. If you can't make CAM scanner work, the other way you can do it is you can actually just take pictures with your phone and copy and paste them into a Google Documents file or into a Word doc. 
And then when you go to save, uh, when you save from Word, I'll just open up the syllabus. Um, you can you can do something similar. The menus will look different if you do this in Google Docs. But when you go to save, you can go to save as, and you can just choose PDF. So if you wanted to type all your answers, or if you can just copy and paste your your um, pictures of your handwriting into Word, and then you can save it as a PDF. You can get around having to use an app on your phone at all. Sorry, um, can I interrupt for one second? Yeah. Um, if you have an iPhone, the Notes app that's already on your phone will actually scan it. If you press the little camera button, it's, it says, do you want to take a picture or scan? And you press scan, it takes a picture and makes a PDF for you right then and there too. Perfect. Yeah, these and these are all great things to know. Um, there's mi a million and one different ways that you can save something as a PDF. Um, just make sure you find one that works for you and your technology, what you have access to. I don't care. As long as it's a PDF, I can read it just fine. Um, on the Mac issue though, don't send me a dot notes or dot pages um, file. Um, I can convert that over, but it's just a pain. So please do your best. If you're gonna say, send something from a Mac, either save it as a PDF or as the dot document, dot doc, something like that. Anyway, that's just me getting nitpicky. Um, so somebody, uh, it's people also commonly ask me, what do you, what do you do about a scientific calculator? Um, if you have good old standby TI-83, it's plenty powerful enough for this class. Frankly, your phone is fine for this class too. Everything's going to be open book in this class. So I, you know, I'm totally fine with you just learning how to use the calculator on your phone better. Um, and if you haven't seen this yet, uh, if you open up the regular calculator app and your cal your app is going to look different than mine, um, probably. But usually, and I haven't done this before recently, if you, you get kind of a decent calculator this way, but usually if you turn it sideways, you'll get more options show up, more buttons show up. So any, you might think you're missing something, a specific button. Try turning your phone sideways if you're using a calculator. Um, either that or... If you spend $3, you can get a paid scientific calculator app that's just like a TI-83 on your phone. Um, if you're going to be in a lot of science classes, it might be worth it to spend the $3 on an app. But um, the one that's built into your phone is plenty strong enough. And I'm, frankly, if for myself, if I'm just doing a couple calculations, I usually just use Google. Typing things into Google works just fine. Um, Google usually will interpret it properly. Um, and I see your question, Lauren, I'll get to that in one second. Um, so if you, if you just wanted to type in, you know, 273.15 times 1.8, just type that into Google, you get a cal the scientific calculator. Google itself works pretty well as a calculator. And if you really want a nicer one, and this isn't really one that you need, um, unless you're in calculus classes, where did my slides go? Wolfram Alpha. Um, Wolfram is actually a German name. It's actually the, the reason that the symbol for tungsten is a W is because it was discovered first in Germany um, and they named it Wolfram. Um, Wolfram Alpha is, is a calculator that does a pretty good job doing pretty much anything you want. Anything you want to check your work on for a math class, Wolfram Alpha will do. Like if you want to know what the uh, in, integral of, I don't know, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 from 1 to, to 99. You can literally just type it in in English and it turns it into the correct mathematical notation, gives you visual representation, and then will actually give you an answer as well. Um, so this is actually a great tool if you're in, you want to check your answers in calculus. Um, and it works, it can do just about handles uh, exponentials and everything really well as well. So um, this is the best free online calculator. Um, it's more than you need 
for the most part, though. There might be a few reasons. It solves systems of equations. For instance, you have two equations and two unknowns, and you want to solve for x and solve for y at the same time. Wolfram Alpha will solve that for you pretty easily, too. So when you get into Gen Chem, if any of you are taking Gen Chem, you'll use Wolfram Alpha to check your work a lot um, because we start dealing with some of those more complicated algebra systems once we get to Gen Chem. Um, what textbook will be required for the readings? Um, actually, it's not called Chem Wiki anymore. It's called Libra Text. Libra from the, the uh, I think it's Latin for free. Um, is an online textbook that's put out by the um, University of uh, California at Davis. Um, there's a link here to the actual, they call it a textbook map, where it just has it broken up. These would be the different chapters in that actual textbook. It's just a free version of the textbook that I usually, that I base my lectures around. Um, and if you click on any one of these, then it goes into, you know, a different sections, just like a regular textbook. It's just online and free. Um, if you really want a physical textbook to look at, the the this textbook map is based on this book called Fundamentals of General Organic and Biological Chemistry by a guy named Mick Murray. Um, and so, if you if you Look for this. Any edition really is fine. I think the most recent one was in 2016, but the one, the, the edition I think I have comes is from 2010. Um, that has a. Um, I'll get you a picture. I'll pull up the cover so you can see what the cover looks like. And again, this is recommended, and it's only if you really want a physical textbook to study from cover looks like that. Um, the library's got a couple of a couple of uh, these that you could check out for the whole quarter. Um, you can find them for relatively cheap on Amazon if you don't mind buying used. I think they're out of print new. It's going to try and make you buy the new edition of it, which is going to cost a couple hundred bucks, probably, well, probably not that much, probably 150 bucks. Um, I don't recommend paying $150 for this. Um, you don't need it. It's You could People generally get by just fine using my slides and lectures and their notes. But if you want a separate textbook, that's the one that I would get. Um, and um, it's also worth noting, there are lots of different sources for digital textbooks. Um, you definitely, it's, definitely would not be something I would advocate. I definitely don't want you to go get a free PDF of this textbook from this, this website. In fact, you should probably just stay away from this website. Um, but if you did go to this website, it does, it does have a download link for a PDF version of this exact same textbook. Um, if you have a tablet, you can study from, from a tablet that doesn't bother your eyes too much. Um, then uh, there, there are worse ways to study than having a, a nice digital PDF of the textbook. Um, but yeah, don't, don't pirate it or anything. Definitely don't go to this website, right? And so this, this link is on there. So you'll know to stay away from this website. And I'm definitely not advocating that you pirate anything. Um, on, on an unrelated note, big publishers, make way too much money off of students. Um, so don't, you wouldn't necessarily wanna feel bad about it if something like that happened anyway, so. Um, like I said, everybody's trying their best to be professional, but um, everybody has lots of distractions. My son's mostly back at school right now, but not all the way. So he's running around all the time. And I literally just had this one jump onto my lap while I was talking. Um, so there will be distractions. I know that from you guys as well on your end. Um, if it's noisy and you're in a noisy environment, stay muted, you know, Zoom etiquette. Um, my daughter Valence will frequently jump into screen. You'll see a little hand, you know, creep up from over here, start waving, um, or she'll start drawing on my whiteboard behind me. So, um, you know, I re recognize you guys have distractions like that as well. Um, and we'll try to all be as accommodating as possible for each other on every front, right? 
Um, my kids have gotten pretty good at not being distracting, but occasionally my daughter gets it into her head that that uh, she needs to be on Zoom for you guys. So uh, I'll do my best. <clears throat> All right, a couple other things about, oh yeah, Desmos is a good option with um, calculators too. Um, I think that's what the math department at, uh, at LTCC uses is Desmos. Um, I've realized, Lauren, I completely forgot about your question 10 minutes ago. Just to cl clarify with the lab portion, um, I would plan to do your best to show up to at least the first five to 10 minutes of the lab, because that's where I'll introduce whatever's going on that week, um, tell you what I want you guys to do. Um, if there's anything we haven't covered yet for, that you need to know for that lab, it might be like a little 15 minute mini lecture to get you, get you started on that. Um, but you do not need to be there that whole time. I will be there. If nobody else is in there, I'm probably not staying all the way till 6.30. Our lab sections go till 6.30. Um, and if I haven't seen anybody in an hour and a half, I will probably turn off my Zoom at you know around five or so. Um, but if you guys are in there working on things together in breakout rooms or whatever, then um, feel free to stay there and work on it the whole time. Um, but it's not required and I'm not taking role. That answer your question? A um, couple things about how to be good students that are actually science-based. This isn't just like handed down from person to person. This isn't folklore. Um, they've actually done lots of good studies on, on the science of memory and retaining information. Um, and a big chunk of that has to do with recalling it repeatedly. Um, and especially the, the one really kind of smoking gun study that I've seen that was really interesting is that retention goes through the roof if you are forced to leave it alone for an hour and then recall it again less than 12 hours later. So, you know, basically be done with your lecture, leave it, and then come back to it that night um, helps a lot with retention. That said, not everybody has time after lectures to come back and study later that night um, with work schedules and whatnot. And so the way that I've structured this class is over the weekend, you will have a quiz every week um, so that you don't go from Wednesday until Monday without thinking about chemistry. Um, so the whole point of the quiz is it's not going to be super tr hard, tricky questions necessarily. Some of them might be, um, but it's mainly just so that you have to, at some point over the weekend, come back and think about chemistry because that's going to help you on Monday um, retain and remember what we were talking about. So I have a pretty wide window of, of when it's gonna be open. They'll usually open on Thursday and you'll have to finish it by Sunday. So um, you can still go a few days without thinking about chemistry, but the idea is that um, you, you are um, thinking about it, not if not constantly, then at least a few times in that time off, and that'll help you um, retain the information better. And that, that applies to the homework as well. Um, you know, I'm going to give you guys the keys to the homework. The keys, the homework is going to be more or less graded on did you finish it on time or not. Um, I'm not grading you very much on did you get the answers right? Did you show your work properly? I'm putting that on you a little bit to if you don't understand a problem to find the key, to ask me about it in office hours, to ask somebody else about it. Um, so, but doing the homework and making, and checking your answers on the homework is gonna be a big part of making sure that you get, the, you get this material. Um, the other thing, this is a lot more, a lot more fun when we can do this in person. It's a lot easier. I'm sure everybody has recognized that if you, anybody who's been doing any work at home stuff has recognized over the last year that um, there's not very much of a line between you know personal life and school life anymore and work life. Um, so I, I used to try and emphasize when we actually had a physical classroom um, that you know, when you step into the classroom, sort of try to switch your brain off from whatever's happening outside the classroom and just be there to think about chemistry. 
Um, that's a lot harder to do when you're sit sitting on the same couch for chemistry as you are from, you know, um, you know, watching Netflix and, uh, or your English class that you hate, but whatever, um, we're still going to try and when you're in chemistry, try to focus on chemistry as much as possible um, and try to associate some positive things and some excitement about science. Um, you guys are in this class it's because you're trying to um, get a degree that has at least some science associated with it. Um, so what we'll do is at the end of every quiz, every weekend quiz, you guys ha will have a space to just ask me a random science question. Um, and I'll take tackle a few of those each class period and talk about random science chemistry applications at the beginning of class while everybody's getting here and set up for Zoom. Thank you. Um, we'll just talk about random science stuff, stuff I'm excited about, stuff you guys are excited about or that you have questions about. Um, just to sort of sw flip that switch. Okay, I'm in chemistry mode now. And plus, it's fun for me. It keeps everything interesting because I'm always curious about what you guys come up with as your questions. So um, try to do your best to when it's chemistry, it's chemistry time. Um, again, that works better when we're in person, but we'll do the best we can. And then this last one is this is something to pay attention to for all of your classes. This is just good life skills here is um, this idea of what's called fixed mindset versus growth mindset. Or sometimes you hear it called the, a deficit mindset versus a growth mindset. Um, a growth mindset is, a, is when you're thinking about yourself and what you're good at, um, having a growth mindset is having the idea that you can get better at whatever you decide to get better at versus a fixed mindset or a deficit mindset is, it, that's the sort of attitude that says things like, I'm just, I'm no good at math, or I hate chemistry because I'm no good at it. Well, you might not be good at it yet, anytime, and that it's, it's a really simple thing to do, but if you th think about consciously, anytime you say, I can't do something, put the word yet on the end to start turn your brain over into that growth mindset. I, you know, anything that you want to get good at, if you dedicate enough time and effort to it, you can get good at it. So there is no such thing as I'm just bad at math. I'm bad at, I hear this a lot with computers. I'm bad at technology. Oh man, I hate Excel. I'm bad at Excel. No, you just haven't had been forced to or dedicated yourself to it enough to get good at it yet. Um, so we're gonna try and focus on that. I don't usually have to correct people too much on that, but if you say, oh, man, I, I just can't get stoichiometry, I'm gonna redirect you best again. No, you're just missing one little thing. You're almost there. Keep putting, keep working at it. We're almost there. Um, just to try and make sure that you guys know that everybody in here has the ability to be good at chemistry. Some of you, based on the background you have, based on what you classes you took in high school, what your interests are, it might seem like it's coming easier. That's not necessarily actually easier for that person. It might just be that they've put in the time a long time ago to be good at algebra. Um, but that said, everybody in here can be good at chemistry and can do well in this class. And my dream, I've never quite gotten there. I've gotten close a few times. My dream is that I get to give out an entire class of A's. Um, so I'm not gonna be artificially lowering grades with curves. If you can show me you understand the material, you can get an A. And I would love to do that. I hate making hard decisions for people that have a, you know, an 89.5, but they worked really hard. I really hate those decisions because it's really hard for me too. And it's really hard on you guys. Um, so no, I'm your ally on this stuff. I'm my whole, point of teaching this is because you guys can get it and you should get it. All right, so keep that on mind. I'm, um, it's natural to have sort of an adversarial attitude um, because I remember having, having instructors and professors that just felt like they were um, grading people down just to grade them down. Um, and so my goal is to never have that act be the case in these classes. All right, so um, 
even when you're angry at me, you're allowed to swear at me, pro probably not to my face. Um, but, you know, in, in private conversation, feel free to swear at me at the assignments. But know that I'm, if I'm giving you a hard assignment, it's not because I want you to fail at it. It's because I have high expectations and you can do it. Okay. All right. I will throw some memes in there from time to time. I'll even try to use them properly. Um, no guarantees on that one, but um, chemistry does actually lend itself well to memes. Um, if you look the, at it the right way, if you squint and turn, tilt your head sideways, um, then uh, chemistry works well with memes. So we'll, we'll do some of that, keep things light a little bit as much as we can, help you remember things. Um, la, and then actually, while I have the syllabus up, we didn't actually look at the rest of the syllabus. Um, I do have office hours, office hours are in the mornings for the most part, but if you can't make these times, um, email me and we can either do, you know, I can answer questions via email, um, or we will, now uh, we can set up a different time. I'm, my availability on Fridays is not very high, but if that's the only time you have available, then we can probably work something out. Um, and the rest of this is mostly boilerplate stuff. I actually had a question. Um, yeah. I noticed on your syllabus, so when I was looking at here, it says section three, Thursday, 1 p.m. to 3.50. We had three and, sections of lab last year. Um, oh, the, okay, the, gotcha. That was last year's syllabus you were looking at. I got that updated this morning. So I shouldn't say that anymore. Um, so on Thursdays, I'm fairly free um, if that's when you're most available to come to office hours. Um, lecture, you guys are all in the same lecture section. Um, lab section is if you have lab on Monday, then that's section one. If you have lab on Wednesday, that's section two. Um, if you show up, if you click on the wrong one and nobody's there after five minutes, go back and check the other one. Make sure you didn't just click the wrong, wrong Zoom link. Um, but there's, there's not really going to be a difference between the two sections. It's just because we have a lot of people registered for this class, um, to make sure that we don't wind up with any lab section that's got, you know, 60 people in it. Cause that's not manageable for, for you guys or for me. Um, but if you need to switch back and forth between the two sec lab sections, um, I ask that you let me know it's less of a big deal now than it would have been in actual labs. Um, because we had limits in the in the classroom size because you can't have 35 people in a chemistry lab and still be safe. Um, but with us being digital, that's less of a concern. So if you need to come to the section, you know, the Monday lab versus the Wednesday lab, let me know ahead of time, preferably, but it's not a big deal if you need to switch back and forth. Um, the rest of this is mostly boilerplates. You guys, you guys do not need goggles. Um, so yay, saving money there. Um, if you wanted to do some kitchen chemistry, if you wanted to do, I have some good kitchen chemistry, um, experiments you can do, then I would recommend buying some goggles just for, uh, liability sake. Um, you, there's lots of ways you can really, really mess up your life with chemicals you would find under the sink. Um, so if you're going to do any kitchen chemistry, make sure you have goggles. If you're not doing kitchen chemistry, you don't need them for this class though. Um, here's the part everybody cares. Actually, before we get into this, that's just worth noting. Good PSA for everybody to know. Never mix cleaning chemicals. Um, just don't do it. Unt unless you've got a chemistry degree, there are probably interactions that you're not going to be expecting. And about once a year, um, people die because somebody mixed cleaning chemicals up. There was like five people that died in a Chipotle last year because they were trying to, somebody mixed bleach and ammonia, um, which makes a gas called chloramine, which is very close to mustard gas. Um, so I, and that's, those are two things that are under, they're right next to each other under your sink probably, right? Um, never mix cleaning chemicals, never mix cleaning chemicals. Um, it's just not worth it. Um, I remember one when I was in high school, somebody mixed liquid plumber and Drano which are for the same application, but have opposite chemicals in them. And it caused an explosion that, that uh, destroyed the whole bathroom and killed janitor who was doing that. 
Um, so never, never, ever do that as long as we're on the safety side of things. Anyway, the part of the lab of the syllabus that most of you guys care about the most is the grading policy when it comes to how these categories are weighted. Um, all of your assignments are going to go into one of three categories. Um, your everyday assignments, this is going to be your labs, your um, homework assignments, any lab quizzes are going to go into the assignments category, and that's worth half your grade. And most of you can get close to 100% on all of those assignments just by getting them turned in and completed. They're turned in on time and completed. You can get close to 100% on in half of your grade. All right, so this course is set up so that you can get A's a couple different ways. Um, one of them is just getting everything in the assignment category turned in on time. That right there is going to get you most of the way to an A. Um, these quizzes are their own category. Those are the weekend weekly quizzes that I mentioned. And then your final exam is worth 20% of your grade. In theory, if you got 100% on every quiz and you turned in every assignment on time, um, you could get a B in this class and not even take the final exam. Um, that'd be pretty hard, but it's doable, technically. Um, but it also means that if you do everything, if you have close to 100% in these first two categories, that you can get a 50% on the final and still get close to an A. And if you're doing all of these other assignments and quizzes, 50% on the final should be a walk in the park. Right, so it's set up so that you can get an A, even if you're bad at taking tests. Well, nobody's bad at taking tests forever, right? Growth mindset. But even if you historically have had trouble with tests, um, we're going to work on that. But you can still get an A in this class, even if you tank the final. Right? So um, there are, I do let you drop an assignment or two. I don't remember exactly what. Um, if I picked one assignment or two assignments, but you get to drop one or two assignments in the assignment category, um, I recommend still having everything turned in. So in case you totally forget something at the end of the quarter, that's not going to drop your grade significantly. Um, and that doesn't belong in there because we don't do pluses and minuses in LTCC. That's a holdover for when I was teaching somewhere else. Um, All right, so any questions on the structure of the class? I'm always open. This is a this is what's known as a living document, meaning that it's not static. It's not going to stay just like this. Um, as I find little typos, um, as you just watched, I will fix it and re-upload it. Um, any changes, any substantial changes that I make are going to be to your advantage. It's because there's something if I'm totally misjudged something or some assignment is just not working, um, I might tweak the syllabus. This is not a contract, it's not set in stone. Um, and if I'm changing anything, it's almost always to your benefit. So I'm open to you guys making suggestions for those changes as well. If something's really not working for you, um, let me know and we'll see what we can do to change the structure of the class a little bit, make sure it makes sense and that you can do well. Uh, uh, oh, late policy. So the late policy, I accept late work. Um, what will happen is when you turn in anything late after the due date, it gets flagged as late in Canvas. And then when I go back through and grade, I'll take a few points off depending on how late it is. Um, I'm not, Canvas defaults to having a midnight deadline for due dates. I don't care if it's turned in at 2 a.m. instead of at midnight. If it's turned in before I'm going to sit down at my desk the next day and start grading, then that's on time to me. It'll still get flagged as late, but I'm not going to take off the points. Um, if it's, I'm, typically what I do is I'll take off one point for every, every lecture late that it is late. So, if, you're, if it's a week late, that's really only two points. I re reserve the right to start taking away more points for people that are, that are 
Um, if everybody's turning everything in late all the time, I'll start being more harsh on that. Um, this will be about as hard as I will get will be 20% for every single business day late. Um, and then not accept anything more than five days late. I've never had a class like that where I had to be that hard. Um, so I typically just turn it in and I'll take off an appropriate amount of points depending on how late it is. Um, and even if it's a month late, turn it in. And if it's an isolated incident, I'll probably still give you five points out of 10 for it. Right, so um, try not to let yourself get to that point because what you really don't wanna do is get to the last week of the quarter have six assignments from week one left over and get five out of 10 on all of them and have to be spending all your time when you should be studying for the final, trying to track down all this random stuff from three months ago. Um, you're not, that's not an efficient use of your time at that point. So really turn things in as close to on time as possible. Even if you're late, get, get it done, get it turned into me. Uh, any other questions, any questions on late work or anything like that? All right, um, the end here, and I'll pull this out separately as a, um, as a PDF for you. Um, this is our, our weekly schedule that's gonna have list of assignments for each week. Um, but it's gonna be the same thing, a lab, a homework, and a quiz every week. Um, so plan on those three assignments every week. Um, your, I just realized, so lab section, you're gonna see that here, I can show you. Uh, if we, if you go to um, portal, like you're logging into your web mail, um, when you go to, yours is gonna look different <clears throat> than mine, but if you go to your schedule, um, when you, where you registered, it'll say Chem 101 or Chem 102. 01 means section one, that's Monday's lab. 02 is section two, that's Tuesday's lab. And again, it doesn't make that big of a difference this, this quarter um, because it's all digital anyway. If you happen to show up to the wrong lab section, that's fine. I'm not going to kick you out of the lab and make you come back the next lab period if you showed up on Monday when you were scheduled to be on Tuesday or sorry, Wednesday. <clears throat> All right, so then there's a few slides of, let's see, oh, cheating. Everybody's, well, my least favorite part of my job is when I have to deal with people turning in work that's not theirs. Um, and that's the, the official definition in plagiarism is anytime you're turning in work that somebody else did with your name on it. Um, there's gray area because I do allow study groups and homework groups. You guys are allowed to work together with things. Um, where I draw the line is, it, and if I have questions about it, what I will have you do is I will have you redo the work in front of me. If you can't duplicate what you turned in or at least get close, then that tells me that you did not really understand it and you just copied what somebody else had written. Um, that also applies to Chegg. Uh, I periodically check Chegg for my questions. I write all my own assignments, all my own test questions, um, and they show up on Google really, really easily um, when I just Google the same language that I use in my test questions. Um, and that has been the bane of my existence for the last year is tracking, it's like playing whack-a-mole. And you might not know this about Chegg in places like Course Hero, um, but if I request the information, if I say I'm the copyright holder on that question and, and my school is opening an academic dishonesty um, investigation, they provide me with all of the information associated with that account. So what IP addresses you logged in from, what, and nobody in this class would ever do such a thing. So I will stop saying you, what IP addresses were logged into from, um, what the name of the email address is, what the username is. Um, so you, people don't get away with it. 
and it just causes a huge headache and and the person doing that winds up with a big f on their transcript um so just please don't put either of us in that situation right it's it's way better to just take a zero on one of the questions on the test than it is to wind up with an F for the entire class, right? So please just don't do that. And remember that's, think about if you're not sure if it's considered cheating or not, think about, okay, if, if I got sat down with a blank piece of paper and this question, would I be able to at least get close to turning to the same answer? And if the answer is no, then you didn't really understand it and you shouldn't turn it in. If you sit down and you look at that answer some more, if you do the work to understand what was done, then on a homework question, that's fine. Um, I don't allow you guys to communicate with each other. I don't that I have a way of policing it per se um, on the test, but the test, you're not gonna have time to do that. Um, and everybody's going to get a diff slightly different version of the test anyway. So if you tried to collaborate with friends on the test, you're just going to wind up doing two tests instead of one test. Um, and you're going to, you're going to run out of time. Um, so don't, don't do that. It's bad. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and if you have any specific questions about specific cases, or you know, there's a take home, usually a take home component of the final, that where I very where I will reiterate this as well and give you some very clear, like this is absolutely where you draw the line. Um, but we'll deal with that when we get closer to it. But if anybody else has any specific questions, you can email me or, or talk to me in office hours. Also highly recommend that you plan the class around your strengths. If you know that you're really bad at deadlines and getting homework turned in, but you're good at taking tests, um, don't get so bad at turning in your stuff that you put yourself in a position where you need to get 110% on the final, right? Plan ahead. Um, if you know, so this would be somebody who is bad at taking a test clearly, they got a 55% on the final. They got 85% on quizzes, but they got a 95% on the assignments just for getting stuff turned in on time. That still comes out to an 84% in the class, comfortable B. And that's with a just tanking the final. Nobody should be getting, if you're coming to class and doing the assignments, you shouldn't be getting anything in the 50s on the final. The class average on the final is usually about 82%. Um, and very few people are lower than 70. Right, so it's still easily within range to get an A for this person on the final. If they had done a 75 instead of a 55, that probably would have been enough to get them into the A range. Right, but if you, if you know that your work schedule means you're not going to get stuff turned in on time or that that's just your personality, you better step up on the final, but you can still get an 80 in the class and still have you know, only 75% of your assignments turned in. Um, don't leave it up to chance. Don't like, oh, it'll be what it is. You know, don't take that approach with this. Know what your goals are, plan ahead for who you are, what your work schedule is, what kind of student you are and how much you care about getting an A in class. And you should be able to get that grade um, if you stick to those plans. Uh, and this is just a fun inspirational quote. It's, I don't know if it's inspirational or not. It is for me. Um, before Starship Troopers was a bad movie, it was a pretty good book. Um, I, I, I now I'm really dating myself. The Starship Troopers came out in the in the '90s, I think. Um, it's been a, it's been a minute. Um, it's uh, the best things in life are free. No, oh, the best things in life are paid with something other than money. Yes. Um, the best things in life are the things that you slave over, are the things that you work really hard at. Um, and that's what makes it so satisfying to get a good A. It's not, you don't feel that strongly about it. If it was a really easy class and you get an A, that doesn't feel that good, right? Like, okay, well, I got an A. But those classes that you really have to put in the effort, that you really struggle at, and then you get an A, that feel, that's a different category of emotion, right? Um, this is the second type. 
you might have to work really hard at this class. At the very least, though, there are a lot of assignments to turn in. Whether or not they're easy for you, that depends on the person. Um, but it'll feel good when you're done. All right, let's take a quick break. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll get into how to measure things the right way. All right, so let's come take 10 minutes. Let's come back at quarter to three, 2.45. Hey, uh, Sean, this is Kevin. Uh, I'm just, I kind of missed the very beginning here. Um, do you prefer Sean or Mr. Riley, Sean's professor? Per Sean's perfect. Cool. And then just one last thing. Um, I don't, the computer I'm having doesn't have a lab uh, webcam. So I will have one, if not this week, at least next week, just letting you know. Perfect. And then uh, if you, if you missed the beginning, um, you might've clicked on the wrong Zoom link. Um, I know, I would know a bunch of people did. Um, if you if you don't have a camera, that's totally fine. Um, I would I would ask that at some point in the next week, um, just put a profile pic so that when you turn your when your camera's turned off, I can still see your face. Uh, just helps me with with uh, not just lecturing to a you know a bunch of black boxes. Um, but uh, it's no no big deal if you if you can't if you don't have access to a camera. Okay, well just letting you know. Cool. Thank you.
All right, it's everybody's bringing it back. Here, I got one good question that I did not mention for um, the quizzes. Oops, went to the wrong person. Um, hang on. Um, the the quizzes, the weekly quizzes that you're supposed to come back to and think about um, chemistry at some point over the weekend, um, that is going to be, they, they don't have a time limit on them. Your time limit is basically Thursday at noon and to Sunday. Um, they won't take, I think for most of them, um, an hour is probably more than enough time. They're going to be about, about you know, four to five questions usually um, of relatively short questions, but there won't be a time limit on them. Um, the only assignment that is going to have a time limit associated with it this quarter is going to be the final exam. Uh, and that's mainly just so that you don't have so that you don't have so much time that you could just look up the answer to every question. It's basically just to keep you moving quickly so that you have to have studied and know the stuff. Um, for the quizzes, though, there is no time limit. Um, unless it, I hate giving absolute answers because if you wanted to consider the time from when it opens on Thursday at noon to Sunday at midnight, um, the time limit, then I suppose you're not wrong. That would make it a like an 84 hour time limit, I guess. But I think that that's, that's more than sufficient. Um, so to consider it not a time limit at all. All right, so just so that everybody gets a little more familiar with um, these breakout rooms as well, breakout rooms in Zoom, if you haven't used them before, it's basically just a way to, for me to take this big group of students of people and um, turn it into a bunch of small Zoom meetings where you guys can interact with each other um, without having to talk in front of the entire group, um, just so it's a, it's a little bit more natural. Um, it's also how we'll handle um, doing like homework assignments. So if you get, um, I will frequently open up a bunch of breakout rooms in the lab section, in the lab classes, so that you guys can work in groups of two or three comfortably without having, you know, five, 15 people all trying to contribute at the same time. Um, so I have some breakout rooms going. Um, and our, so what I want you guys to think about in these breakout rooms, and we're going to take about five or 10 minutes, um, and I want you to think about these two questions. Um, what are some reasonable expectations for yourself, and what do you expect of the other students as much as it applies to you, um, which, again, with us not being in an actual physical classroom, other students don't affect you as much, but you know, if, what are some reasonable expectations of other students and what ex expectations do you have for yourself for this class? So sort of set some goals. Um, and then what are some reasonable expectations that you guys have for me? I know what I think your expectations are of me, but um, I frequently am not 100% right about that. Sometimes you guys surprise me. Um, so, um, what do you expect of me? What would you like within a reasonable um, amount of effort? Um, feel free to make a request. And I'll just say, yeah, that's that's reasonable, but that's way too much work. There's just not a feasible way to do that. Um, can't hurt to ask. Worst that can happen is I'll say no, right? Um, so, in small groups, I'm just randomly assigned. Um, Think about those two questions. What expectations do you guys have of yourselves and other students? What expectations do you have of me? And then I will give you like a two minute warning to wrap up any conversations you have and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit. And Katie, yes, there is a lab today.
right so everybody at this point should be able to see the breakout room so go ahead down at the bottom somewhere i should say join breakout room something like that All right, we have just about everybody back. So feel free to jump in in the chat or unmute. Um, 
what uh, what did you guys did you folks come up with for reasonable expectations for yourselves in this class and for other students? I think um, for for myself personally, uh, the reasonable expectation is um, just to fully grasp the the level of math that's involved. Obviously, I can't speak for everyone here, but that's something that I have struggled. I'm I'm almost thirty, and you know, I've struggled with algebra and math for my entire life. So that's just something that's important to me. Good. That's that's a really good goal. I, I tell my students in Gen Chem, um, especially, but in this class as well, that this is basically a class that's going to teach you how to use all that math that you've been taught in high school um, and in, in college. How do you actually apply it and use it well for something that actually matters, something in the real world? Um, this that's what I'm going to teach you in this class. So that's a that's a great goal to have. Um, I can't call the class applied algebra because I do also have to teach you chemistry stuff and applied algebra is its own upper division math class, actually, if you're a math major, um, but it's not far from it, frankly. What else did anybody want? Um, balancing workload with other classes. Yeah, so I will definitely keep in mind that I know everybody has a finite number, number of hours in a week. Um, I'm going to ask a lot of you in this class as far as the amount of work that I expect you to do in this class, but at the same time, um, I'm not going to make it impossible. And I know that you have other classes, you know, especially when it gets close to midterm week and things like that. Um, so definitely do your best. I and mean, that goes both ways. I expect you to spend a fair bit of time on this class, but I don't expect you to spend all of your time on my class. If you find yourself neglecting your other classes, um because you're spending too much time on chemistry um well i mean from my point of view that's a good problem to have but it's probably still a problem um and maybe we need to talk about how maybe you could be a little more efficient about things so if you find yourself in that situation definitely um talk to me about it if you, i don't want you getting too burnt out or or failing other classes because um you're spending too much time on chemistry jessica um, I would say an expectation would be to, to ask questions because um, I know I tend to like not ask questions because I get nervous or I don't know shy about it but I, that's one thing I know I need to do. Good um, yeah asking questions is is the primary way that you're going to make sure you understand what's happening in some of these assignments um, you know especially if it's if it's a topic that you're you've been struggling on um you know i can give you the key but if the key doesn't match with what you thought you were supposed to do then you're still kind of lost and you're still going to need to ask follow some follow-up questions so definitely um the more questions you guys ask in this class the better this class will be frankly um otherwise it's just going to be me talking about the same stuff i always talk about um Group projects don't waste to wait to the last minute. Yeah, I try to minimize group projects because everybody's schedules are so weird right now. Um, but I, I definitely think it would be a good idea to, um, especially if you already know some people in this class, have a um, a weekly, you know, time that you guys can schedule to meet up to go over homework problems or things like that in small groups. Like I said, I'll try to give you guys time to do that in labs as well. It's harder to do that virtually rather than when we were in person. Um, but uh, debt working in groups is really helpful, but I'm gonna limit the amount of um, actual group projects that you have to put your name on along with other people because I know how hard that is um, virtually. Um, good communication, definitely. Um, and so Canvas has pretty good inbox app, email works really well. Um, you know, if you set up your own Zoom account, you can always host Zoom meetings for, for you and other students or um, come to office hours to ask me questions as well. Um, direct communication is really helpful with that. Um, try not to make it too many assumptions, right? Because that's gonna only wind up with miscommunication happening, right? 
um, memorizing things. I try and I really dislike telling people to memorize things. Um, everything that we go over in chemistry can be derived if you're good, good enough at the math um, from a few basic principles. Um, but that said, there's some things it's easier to memorize and some things where I'm going to want you to be so quick um, for things like the element names and symbols. And I'm not going to make you memorize what the atomic number is of anything because I'm never going to take away your periodic table. But there are lots of periodic tables out there that just say AU and don't say gold. So you have to be able to know that AU is gold in order to use those. Um, so there'll be a little bit of, of memorizing. Um, and so we should be ready for that. And I'll try to give you guys flashcards are great for that kind of thing. Um, but uh, there will be still, and, and feel free to call me out on it. If I tell you, this is really just one you're better off memorizing, you can ask me why. Like, I thought you said you don't like memorizing. Why are you telling me to memorize this? And I'll either give you a reason or I'll say, no, you're right. Let's go over that some more. Um, zero late assignments is a great goal to have for yourself. Um, it's going to be really hard to do, especially with Canvas, you know, throwing that late flag on it so quickly. Um, if at uh, 12.01, um, you're going to get a late flag on there, but know that I don't count those as late, so you shouldn't count that as late, being hard on yourself that way, but not doing assignments last minute is fantastic. Um, I'm going to be totally honest with you. That's not how I was as a student. I was an awful student. Um, I was really bad at turning stuff in on time and not waiting to the last minute. I don't recommend that, but I know that that's some people's personality. We should always try to be better about that, right? But, um, and it's just a fact of nature. If you teach college, college age students um, tend to procrastinate. I guess I can be more general. People tend to procrastinate. So um, do the best you can on that. Definitely don't leave it everything to the end. At least have an idea of how much time it's going to take you. You don't want to get to eleven o'clock the night something's due without having ever looked at it before, right? That's a recipe for disaster. If it's going to be a six-hour assignment and you're just opening it up at eleven o'clock the night it's due, that's probably not a good idea. But at the very least, you should have looked at it and said so that you can plan things out better. effectively retaining the information given to us in class. That's the trick, right? That's everybody's goal for every class, but it is a good goal to have, to have it articulated there. Um, and, you know, like I said, I was not a great assignment. I would say, instead of saying zero late assignments, I'm just going to say minimize late assignments. Zero might not be a realistic goal for some of you. Um, if you're like I was, um, but as little as possible and as close to on time as possible. All right, those are good goals. I'm, I, in particular, giving giving grace is a good idea. Everybody's got lots of stuff going on. Everything's thawing out slowly but surely, and other random stuff. Every routine is changing. Um, all the time. So we'll try to be understanding as possible about that. Um, I think that if anybody who has kids at LTUSD, I think that they're going back to being full time at the end of this month, but only four days a week. So that means that your pickup time for your kids might have to be, you know, in the middle of our lecture. Um, I'm not going to hold that against you. You shouldn't hold that against yourself. Do the best you can. See what you can, you can do. Um, to to make that schedule work, but um, yeah, we're all we're all working with each other on stuff like that, right? Check discussion boards daily. Yeah, the discussion boards get to be a bit of a um, graveyard occasionally, but the more active you guys are on the discussion boards, then then that's that's going to be a good place to go for help as a, a good resource when you can't get a hold of me. Um, I try to be very available, but I also have other stuff going on too, other classes I'm teaching and I have have kids and obligations. I got roped into being a little league coach this year. Um, so that's going to put a damper on what hours I'm available after class and that, things like that. Um, so yeah, we're all trying to balance all of that and the discussion boards are a good way um, to get 
more help from things like that. And the more active everybody is, the more of uh, more community sort of attitude they'll be there. All right. What do you guys expect from me? Broad question. I feel like you should have some expectations, Cheyenne. Um, I think just the consistent communication about what to expect for the weeks and for the quizzes and things like that, which you throughout this discussion, it feels like you're going to prepare us pretty well. But yeah, that would be an expectation that I have. Yeah, at the very least, I'm going to try and make sure that at the beginning of every week on Sunday night, I'm sitting down and I'm looking at the next week's schedule and making sure that those week overviews are going to have be accurate um, to the best of my ability. Some of that's still going to change, but um, you know, as the week goes on, but definitely do the best I can there. Clear instructions and expectations. Absolutely. I'll do the best I can. Um, give you guys rubrics when it's appropriate or, and keys for the homework. So, you know, and I show my work when I write a key for you guys for the homework assignments, I'll show the work that I expect you guys would should, should show as well. I'll sometimes I'll over show the amount of work that you would actually need to do to make it clear. Um, but it definitely that that should make that clear, consistent uh, expectations. I'm always willing to stop and explain concepts when there's confusion. Just have to let me know that you're confused. Um, I have a bad habit of mistaking silence for um, acceptance or, or assent. Um, so if I say, does that make sense to everybody? I'm, I'm actually asking a question that's not rhetorical usually. And if nobody says anything, I assume everybody understood it. I know that's not always the case, but that's just the way that my brain's wired right now. Um, so please jump in there, even if you can't formulate a question yet, just like, wait, I totally didn't get that. Can you say that one more time? And then go from there. Um, but you guys jumping in asking questions is, is a key part of that. All right, available on Zoom, good. Check the discussion boards. Yeah, I definitely will check the discussion boards. If somebody's already answered a question, I'm not going to jump in there and and talk over them. Um, if they if somebody's answered your question in a, in a way that I unless there's I need to clarify something, I'm not going to jump in there. So just because I didn't understand or didn't respond doesn't mean I didn't see it. Um, and same with emails too. Um, if you send me an email 15 minutes before class. Um, asking me a question that matters to the whole class, I'm probably not going to respond to your email. But what I will do is at the beginning of class, go over that question um, so that everybody can hear the answer to it. So um, I will try to be as, as clear as possible with that. And if you do need additional clarification, just let me know. Consistent grading. Yes. Um, I try to be as consistent as possible with grading. And with that, that's going to matter the most for you guys on the final. Um, and the way I grade the, the final is I grade everybody's number one, I, number one for everybody, back to back to back to back to back. And then I go through and I grade number two for everybody, make sure all the deductions are even across the board, because otherwise it's just way too easy um, for me to, oh, you know, take two points off for the same mistake here, but four points over there. Um, so it, that slows down the process a little bit. Um, but uh, I definitely try to be as consistent as possible um, and remove the names wherever possible from, from your guys' work so that I don't, you know, don't let my implicit biases slip in anywhere. I've gotten pretty good at that. My numbers are pretty uniform across the board, but do the best I can. And if you see an inconsistency, um, feel free to bring it up. It's totally possible, especially if you're at the beginning of the alphabet. Um, then typically I'm still setting my grading score when I go through. If you made the exact same mistake as your friend and they got a minus one and you got a minus two, let me know. That's probably just oversight. I'm not trying to um, grade you down more than that. Just let me know and I can go back and I'll fix the score on that. I have no problem going back and fixing people's scores when I mess up grading, um, which does happen. I'm not going to pretend to be perfect at grading. All right. Consistency. Availability. Um, definitely try to be as available as I can. If you send me emails, I'll respond as fast as I can. Here's a trick for to get your um, 
instructors in general to respond faster. If I can respond with really quickly with a yes or no, or that looks good, or you're on the right track, that's a much faster response for me to write. And you, therefore you will get a answer faster. When I get emails that say things like, I totally don't get conversions. Well, that's a longer conversation than we can really have via email, right? That's like an entire, we're gonna spend two whole weeks on conversions. So when you come at me with, I don't get conversions, um, we need to say, that's probably a better question for office hours where we can actually have a, have a discussion back and forth. Um, if you want me to check your work, if you, then take a picture of your work, email it to me and say, hey, am I on the right track? And I can say, yes, no, that's really fast. Even over the weekend, I get to those pretty quickly. Um, I do not have a preference. My Canvas inbox routes to my LTCC email, so it doesn't really make a difference to me. If you're going, if you're going to be attaching files, I think email works better. Canvas's um, inbox doesn't do handle files very well. Um, so if you're going to be sending me files for me to look, you know, a, a JPEG for me to look at stuff or a PDF or something, um, go through email. But other than that, I don't really care. They're, it's the same to me. Whatever is easier for you. All right. Um, and then a couple of questions about going slow or re-explaining re things. I'll say pacing. I'm going to do my best. I think I, I have an idea of what the pace for this class should be. I've taught it enough times, um, but everybody's different. Every class is different. So some classes will spend extra time in some places So um, and go faster than others. So feel free to let me know if you don't think the pacing is appropriate. If I'm going too fast or too slow, just let me know and we can adjust that. Um, and along with that, here's a good tip for when you are watching videos on YouTube. Um, if you haven't figured out how to play with the playback speed, um, changing the playback speed to watch a lecture at one and a half times might make me sound a little bit funny, but it's way more tolerable for me to watch videos at one and a half speed when I'm trying to learn something because going at one speed just feels so slow, it takes up so much time. Um, definitely uh, take advantage of that. It's down in the bottom corner on, uh, on YouTube videos. All right, anybody else wanna add anything that we haven't covered yet that you expect of me in this class? Cool, I think I can do these four things. And I think you guys can do the things we listed on the other page. So we are in good shape there. All right, so the, the last few things that I wanna go over here and timing is gonna be just about perfect. Um, let's just talk about a little bit about how I think about teaching this class. Um, my teaching philosophy, it sounds like kind of a boring way to say it, but I think science is super cool and that's why I like teaching it. So I hopefully I can get you guys excited about it a little bit too. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures in the world. Um, this picture on the left, every single point of light that you see is a galaxy. Um, and this picture, this is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. The original Hubble Deep Field was not quite as detailed and high resolution. Um, but you can go, you can zoom in on this and you can start to see some of the pinwheel galaxies that look like the Milky Way and um, other weird things in there. Um, this was discovered because somebody had free time on the Hubble telescope and didn't really have anything in mind. And so they took the Hubble telescope and this, the, I think she was the director of, of the Hubble telescope at the time. And so she, all of her work was all being, um, you know, administrative stuff. So she didn't have time to be doing any of the direct science anymore, she thought. Um, but she had time on the Hubble telescope. So she said, you know what, I'm gonna take a picture with the Hubble telescope of this empty space next to the moon in the sky where there are no stars. And it, she just trained the Hubble telescope on this part of the sky every night for, I think it was the better part of a year and then um, turned it into one super long exposure um, and discovered all of these galaxies. Um, 
it's a, so it really is a really cool example of science happens when people aren't expecting it, when people have questions and just decide to try and do something. Um, and it's really, and it's also really cool. It's all of these galaxies is only one 13 millionth of the sky. So in theory, there should be this many galaxies spread out in every direction across the entire sky. So this is actually how we get an estimate for how many galaxies are there in the universe. Um, and it winds up being something like billions of galaxies, billions and billions, as Carl Sagan would say. Um, so I think that that's really cool. That wouldn't have it been discovered if people were just content with learning about the way things are. There's so much school stuff out there that it would be doing everybody a disservice if we didn't try to learn about it. Um, and I'm totally blanking on the woman's name who took, who was the first one to take this picture. Um, but it would be doing her a disservice to not show you guys this cool stuff um, because there's really cool stuff out there. And it makes me excited about learning about new things and to teach you guys, show you guys new things. Um, and in the same vein, you go the other direction and go incredibly small instead of incredibly large. This is a map of all of the chemical reactions that happen inside of a yeast cell. A single cell has all of these chemical reactions. Every single line on this subway map is a chemical reaction. Every single dot is a different chemical. And all of these are all linked together. Every single one of these chemicals affects the concentration of every other chemical. Um, if you look at some of these, some of these are labeled even. Um, this big circle in the middle, that's the citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle that you might've learned about in uh, biology. Um, and which is tied into, this is all glycolysis right here. But all of these things, as the colors start shifting, it's not like there's different lines, like there actually is in the subway system. All of these different systems are all linked together and changing one concentration over here is going to change everything's concentration, which is why, why medications have all of the side effects that they do. You can't affect any one part of the body without affecting every other part of the body, which I find incredibly fascinating as well. And for those of you who have taken some math, has anybody taken linear algebra? Not college algebra, linear algebra. It's usually your second year math major class, you take it after calculus. Um, basically, it's, it's the math of doing, um, doing algebra with matrices. Um, you can model every single one of these concentrations as a different number in a matrix, and you get a matrix that's a thousand rows by a thousand columns, or however many dots there are here, multiple thousands probably. And all of those things, we can we have the math and the ability with computers to study all of that now, which is super cool. Um, and I think everybody is interested in things like that. Everybody's interested in how their own body works. And everybody's innately good at science. Everybody understands cause and effect, at least once you get past about three. And then they have a lot of fun at three um, learning cause and effect for the first time. Right, so everybody is good at being a scientist. You might just have been told or had it drilled into you by getting bad grades or not being able to memorize stuff fast enough that you're not good at science, but that's not the case. Um, there's one, I'm gonna call an audible here because I think the next slide is, we'll start with that next time. Um, let's see. If I can get this pulled up. Yeah. So this is a really good web comic called XKCD. It's a guy who's got a PhD in uh, robotics from Stanford. He worked at NASA for a while and then he decided he liked um, drawing web comics better than working on robots for NASA. Um, but it, this is a really good philosophy. This, this is my philosophy, why I like teaching this class. I've taught it a million times. Uh, not really, but um, I try not to make fun of people for admitting they don't know things because for each thing everyone knows by the time they're adults, 
that means that there's about 10,000 people in the U.S. hearing about it for the first time. So because I've heard about it, for I've known it for 15 years, doesn't mean that you guys have known about it for 15 years. That means I get to show you guys really cool, fun stuff. Um, because it means we get to do things like, you know, some most of you have probably heard of the Diet Coke and Mentos thing. What do you mean Diet Coke and Mentos? That's an excuse for us to go. When you say, what do you mean Diet Coke and Mentos? That's an excuse for us to go have fun, go buy some Diet Coke and some Mentos and watch what happens. Um, if you haven't done that before, Google uh, on YouTube, look at Diet Coke Mentos and try and do it yourself if you have a, a yard now that we have good weather. Um, I highly recommend it. It's very fun. You will make a big mess. Um, if you, there are any small children around, I encourage um, having them be the ones to drop the Mentos into the Diet Coke so that they can get covered in Diet Coke instead of you. Um, but uh, that's that kind of sums up why I like this class, why I like teaching this class to you guys, is because I get to be the one to teach you some of these really fun things about the world, about how the world works, really cool stuff. So with that in mind, um, always be willing to ask the question because Worst case scenario, you get to be one of today, one of today's lucky 10,000 that gets to learn about something for the first time. So we'll talk a little bit about scientific method and get into how to measure stuff on Wednesday. Um, those of you who have lab today, go ahead and log off, take, um, take 10 minutes, go walk around and we'll start lab at 3.30. Um, and uh, it shouldn't, it won't take the whole time today, but go ahead and show up and we'll talk about lab. All right, everybody else, I'll see you on Wednesday.